Well, I have a couple guys here from Wren Collective, and uh, we have Garrett and Chris. Is that right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes, good. And um, you're Irish. Is that right? <laughs> We are. Yeah, very much so. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah we don't want to get that straight. No, so, so just tell us a little bit about the start. How did Ren Collective start? Tell us about the name Rand, because that's an old word that yeah. you don't hear much of. Yeah, the um, Rand was used in the King James Bible. It means to tear. So we started a college movement 12 years ago, and uh, I pastored it. Chris led worship at it, and we founded it on uh, two verses in the Old Testament. One of them is... In Isaiah, God rend the heavens and come down, so come and meet us. And the second one was found in Joel, um, which was uh, God commanding his people, rend your hearts, not your garments. Mm. And um, that very much was talking into the Jewish culture about being real and authentic and not being religious. So we, uh, we started rend with the real desire to meet people in their 20s and 30s who maybe had grown up in church or hadn't had any church background, but once they hit real life and real struggles, that uh, they had somewhere where they could go and be real and feel like they could process that and discover God themselves. So you pastored this church and, and you led worship. Yeah, that's right. So is that church still going? It's once we reached, I think about seven years, we all were growing up. So it was very much like a college, almost like a college time. Huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that happened, I mean, we saw lots of people come to faith. And the amazing thing about it was you always see the fruit afterwards. So many people went out to be missionaries or do things or, or church planters. And uh, we decided then seven years later that we would start Rand Collective. Huh. So we started the band then whenever we had all sort of grown up a bit. <laughs> and what was the name of the church? So it was called Rand. It was the yeah, name yeah. of the church. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the worship culture in Northern Ireland. Is there one? Well, yeah, there definitely is. So the thing that we don't have is we don't have like CCM music. So we have no Christian radio or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I guess worship seems a little bit different. Sometimes it's a little bit more liturgical, a little bit more old fashioned. But we, uh, we really love to worship in the UK. It's, it's our favorite. Like uh, we, we really enjoy just gathering together as a church to sing. Um, it, it's awesome actually, like Northern Ireland's almost the Bible belt of the UK. Uh, so there's a really thriving hmm. worship culture there. Hmm. Do you notice that uh, uh, Irish people get engaged in worship more so? Would you see any differences or similarities between America? It's all, if it's all post coffee, then you know if it's early in the morning, <laughs> nobody, cap cap, right? yeah, I mean, nobody's getting engaged at 9 a.m. service, but at the 11 a.m. They're, <laughs> they're kind of, they're warming up. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, but I because I've had people from different parts of Ireland, the UK, who have said that the men especially sing more mm. than they notice here. I don't know if you guys notice I any suppose, difference or not. I suppose they would. Yeah, it could be. You know, one of the things is we don't have the same level of production in church, and I wonder sometimes. And it's a question that we ask when we do what we do, serving all around the world, is sometimes we can play so much at people that people forget that they're meant to sing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's certainly at home, more of the uh, cathedral-like buildings and you can hear your voices. I think that encourages people that they have a voice and that they're important. Mm. Um, and it's something that we are trying to learn ourselves and carry that on. You mentioned that the music industry isn't, isn't present or isn't very big in Ireland, is that right? The no, Christian music? Uh, not really. There isn't really one at all. Um, it's amazing that we've got <laughs> this far, to be honest. <laughs> it's miraculous. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, there's a real love for art, for art's sake, but not really so much uh, an industry. And certainly not, there wouldn't really be a market for a Christian subculture because being Irish is enough of a subculture of its own, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So, um, do you see in where you live of a lot of Catholic, a lot of Protestant, or mix, or what? Uh, we, in Northern Ireland, I think it's it's pretty much almost 50-50 now, um, which is lovely, and uh, the whole breadth of church is great. We, uh, we, we're all about unity. The reason we have collective in our name is because, for those who don't know much about the Northern Irish history of recent years, we went through 25 or so years of um, fighting, and a lot of people thought it was because between Protestants and Catholics, but more it was a, more about politics than religion. Mm. And um, our heart and desire is that uh, seeing unity in the body of Christ, whether it's Protestant, 
Catholic, whether we break that down to Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, that we're all followers of Jesus. And that's, uh, and that's a big part of, of why we love doing what we do and getting to serve every, like we serve in every situation you can imagine we have been in with the church. And yeah. <laughs> it's great to see the color huh. of, 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 God's, uh, of God's family. How have you noticed music bridging the gap in these different denominations? You know, I think everybody is always a little bit disarmed by the fact that we're Irish. So they're always really open to what we do in a, in a really unique way. Because I, I guess, I mean, functionally, it's kind of ethnic music. Yeah. So uh, like people really jump on board. They, I think everybody's got an association with Irish being a little bit wild and a little bit fun. And it, it lets people let their guard down for sure and realize that this is something a little bit different. Maybe if they were put off by religious music, they have, might, you no, uh, have you noticed that Americans really love Irish accents and they're just enamored with it? Get, can't get enough of it. Yeah. And it's great. I mean, I presume it's because there are so much, there's so much uh, heritage. A lot of Americans uh, have heritage back in Ireland and Scotland and That's right. the UK. So it's great. And it's, it's lovely to feel like uh, people are actually connecting with their, their history whenever they come and hear our music. It's a fun part of it. Uh. So you have a project called Art of Celebration, mm -hmm. which probably speaks a lot about your whole philosophy. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it kind of all starts from this idea that we had that um, seriousness actually isn't a fruit of the spirit, but joy is. And so uh, working backwards from there, we were kind of realizing that in church, we've got really good at processing intense emotions, even negative emotions. Uh, we're actually better at lamenting than we are at celebrating, mm -hmm. yet the weight of the Psalms would push you towards the idea that most of worship is a celebration and that some of worship is a lament. And I guess we were just trying to correct that balance a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing about the art of celebration is we don't find it easy. Like you're not looking at very, you know, we're not very uh, natural optimists, <laughs> but <laughs> it's an art that we always have to discover. It's something that we chase after. You know, to truly celebrate, we have to fully trust that God has our lives in his hands and that we don't need to worry. We don't need to be overwhelmed by fear or shame or guilt, but that we are free in him. So why shouldn't we party? Mm, good. Good word. So tell me a little bit about this phrase you guys have, homemade worship mm. for homemade people. Mostly because we can't afford studios. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we record it in our homes a lot. One of the things that I guess coming from Ireland without a music industry, without all of that sort of stuff, we have um, tried to chase after God in our own authentic way and not get caught up in something that is, our first album is actually called The Organic Family Hymnal. <laughs> not get caught up in something that wasn't organic and real and true. So we recorded our second album, Homemade Worship by Handmade People in my house, my and my wife's house. And we all came and we wanted, we believe that worship and our faith is meant to be part of our normal everyday lives. It's not something that's for our holy part, uh -huh. but it's for everything. So that, that was the idea behind that. And you guys aren't a typical band. I mean, you have a very distinct celebratory sound and you use different kind of instruments, some pretty wild instruments. Tell us what, what, that, what those instruments are. Well, I guess we just like to play with anything that seems fun. Uh -huh. that, that, that's how we work out what we're gonna use. That's how we define our genre. Yeah. It's just a celebration band. But uh, Gareth has a special instrument that he's crafted <laughs> yeah, for himself. I crafted yeah. it in the fires of Mordor himself. <laughs> but um, it's called the Jingling Johnny. It's a percussion stick. It has like pie pans and springs and bells and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's great fun. We obviously play the banjo, the bazooki. Those are all Irish instruments. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, uh, the mandolin. Yeah. And a then, bazooki is an Irish instrument? It, well, there's Ooh. the Greek bazooki yes, and there's the Irish right. bazooki. Really? So the Irish bazooki is flat back. The Greek one is the uh, bulbous shape. Right. So, um, and it's great. We love... We love just picking up anything. Chris's favorite phrase is, give me an instrument that looks fun and I'll try and learn how to play it. <laughs> yeah, that's how we've been recording for the last five years. Yeah, yeah, just go just in with it. Work it out backwards. Ever play a sitar? Not yet. Well, it, looks it looks terrifying. <laughs> well, I've looks got one for you. Oh, good, right, we'll, we'll have you. a go. Fantastic. <laughs> right. 
So you, when you record, like you record even differently, not only do you play, but you recorded an album, a live album, didn't you, around a campfire? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what came into your head to do that? What was that about? Uh, pure stupidity, I think. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was one of the uh, most impractical things we've ever done. And we're on the beach, we got the seagulls, we got the waves, we got the people walking by. Um, but the whole heart behind it was that same idea that we were talking about hearing people sing. Mm -hmm. Like when you're around a campfire, you've got no rock stars, you've got nobody who's up on a stage who's more important, but we're all on the same level. We're all worshiping God and everybody hears their voice. So that was the idea behind it. Then the practicalities we just tried to solve. <laughs> was that hard to get all the balance right? Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's something we'll probably never do again, but yet it's probably one of the favorite things that we've ever done. Uh, yeah. I think it just captured something of the simplicity and rawness at the heart of what we do. Um, you're just singing in the open air. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing. And sure. we're glad we've done it. Mm -hmm. And then you did a music video, a lighthouse, your lighthouse music mm -hmm. video, and that was recorded out at sea, right, in a fishing boat on the Irish Sea, mm -hmm. which can be pretty rough, right? And which was thoroughly was, impractical yeah. again. And so yes. again, yeah. you, but, yeah. you, but you wanted to capture something when yeah. you did that, right? You wanted yeah. to get that whole storm effect? Yeah, it? well, I mean, it is, the, the song, uh, My Lighthouse, is about literally being, feeling lost in life, like being lost at sea. And uh, so that's what we did. We went out on a fishing trawler and, um, I mean, admittedly, my wife was six months pregnant and wasn't that happy with me when we were out at sea. <laughs> but uh, you just got to brave those storms as well. That's right. But uh, so that was the idea. Yeah, just knowing that God's the fire before us and when we feel like we're lost in our troubled seas, that, that he's the one who calls us safe to shore. So we thought, well, let's just give it a go and hopefully we won't die. And you found a fisherman to take care of. He was crazy. Every other fisherman we asked, and this is, goes back to, I guess, Irish superstition, and said no because there was a girl. So and the whole superstition of women aren't allowed uh, on boats, it's bad luck. Yeah, so sure. we only found one guy and we had to cross his palm with silver to make it happen. <laughs> the luck of the Irish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so your worship is fun, but you deal with some pretty serious life themes. I mean, you talk about the whole storm thing. Um, there was a German interviewer. Tell us the story of who... who I think you told or they told you about somebody who had experienced loss in their lives, but they heard your music and it was transforming to them. Tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, there was that story. There's actually been countless stories. Yeah. On, we have a, a celebration wall on this tour. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, we actually, we collect our stories now because we, mm. I mean, it's the thing that keeps us going. It's the fuel for us. But, you know, the beautiful thing is that this whole idea of celebration, it isn't just for people who have everything going right in their lives and who are feeling circumstantially like they really want to celebrate. But it is, it's a, it's a deeper truth. The joy of the Lord is our strength, even in the midst of difficult times. And so even, for example, there have been people who have reported to us that they have found celebration in the middle of struggles with cancer, in the middle of struggles with grief. Uh, like countless stories, they're all attached to that celebration wall every night. It's amazing to see how a commitment to celebrate can actually bring joy and strength even in the middle of the darkest times. Hmm. So tell us some about some of the highlights on this tour so far. Besides being here, I mean. Yeah. Besides that, what would be well, a highlight? This That's is it. a highlight. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, you know, this, this isn't going to sound spiritual, but I'm just going to tell you my personal highlight. <laughs> which was the first night we decided we would get out what we now call the joy orbs, which are massive beach balls. And in the last song, we just came out and the guys threw them into the crowd and people's eyes lit up and everybody's like, and it was just an amazing party. Um, nice. We also have uh, some, we have bubble machines. So in one of our songs, and it's talking about the art of celebration, all these bubbles come up and people just go back to that childlike wonder you know it's yeah. it's kind of like they're getting it again giving them the, permission to have fun exactly so. and that to me seeing that happen is the highlight for me when people's eyes just spark up and they go wow not that they think we're awesome but that they think this is amazing i can celebrate god and and worship isn't something that's one color but it's it's a wide expanse of expression so that's for me it's true anything for you anytime you hear people sing along with uh with worship songs and you get to really experience that, that that time of connection with your brothers and sisters and then with God at the same time. It's always pretty awesome. So Neat. it's hard to pick a highlight, to be honest. So um, 
Tell us about the time I hear you mistook Minnesota for Phoenix. Ah, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't me. Yeah, I'm sure good with did, my but... geography. Well, the issue was the bus had driven into almost like the basement of this arena, so I hadn't been outside all day. <laughs> so I've got to use that as my excuse. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not sure what quite got into me. It was the biggest show we had ever played at that point, and uh, I mean, there's 18,000 people there. Mm. And. Uh, you know, I got up, I tried to, tried to overcome my, my nervousness with uh, overcompensating. You know how you do. So uh, it's just like, so have we got any friends in Phoenix? <laughs> was just it silence. <laughs> 18,000 people just being silent and just, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they could be any more different. I mean, but then no. you ended up marrying a girl from... Yeah, I'm Minnesota. Minnesota, so... Did. Oh, you did? So now he's not confused anymore. Oh, good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get them right most of the time now. Yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been married? Uh, just since last December. Oh, great. Now, so. that didn't happen on that tour, did it? No, it didn't. Did you met her? <laughs> okay. Did you meet her on that tour? I was just thinking about that. Rock and Marsh, you did meet her on that tour? Did I meet her after that shoe? Maybe you did. Wow. That, Gosh, that, that's true. Love There's them. miracles. <laughs> miracles. Okay, There's so no you one. guys have been nominated for Best Live Show. Is that right? Yeah. And who was it that nominated? Uh, what was with the K-Love Awards? Yeah, the K-Love Fan Awards. Oh, that's great. That. So tell us what a live show, a Rent Collective live show is like. Oh, chaos. <laughs> Complete bonkers. Uh, we try and go through the whole breadth of, emo of our emotions because... That's part of how we uh, worship God. We want people to have moments of reverence, but we won't have people have moments of abandon. Mm. So um, we change instruments all the time. We fire confetti at people. Hopefully don't, <laughs> don't injure anyone. We, uh, <laughs> we uh, dance, and then we it's have nice. just moments of, we end every night with um, a song called Simplicity. And that for us encapsulates our, our campfire album, the whole idea, which was just coming back to complete simplicity. So after all the fun stuff and the lights and all of that, we just take it back to becoming like a child and just realizing that he's our first love and coming back to that. So it's, it's fun. So if you've ever seen the movie Titanic, yes. it's like the bottom deck. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, right, okay. Yeah, not the top yeah, deck, okay. definitely not. not. The top deck. <laughs> So what are you guys right now? You're in the. Are you in the middle of this tour? Are you at the end of it or uh, exact middle? Yep. Really. Mm -hmm. So how long is it all together? Eight weeks U.S., two weeks U.K. Hmm. So we're for, we're coming into our fifth week in the U.S. and then we go uh, back to the U.K. and do two weeks. And what do you? What's your upcoming project? Do you have anything in the? Oh, we do. And I was yeah. laughing about you saying we'll probably never do it again, but we are doing it again. <laughs> we're bringing out a Christmas album called Campfire Christmas. Is that right? It is. Is and it going to be another live campfire it's, scene? Uh, there are. There's going to be certainly lots of crowd vocals, and uh, you should have a campfire in a studio. I don't know if they'll allow you to do that. <laughs> Cut a hole. It in would the be road, much something. easier, wouldn't yeah. it? It would save us all the stress and all the smoke in our eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's coming out mid-November. Awesome. Um, we're excited because I mean. Christmas is such a great time of the year. Talk about it's it. It's so magical. Good opportunity to celebrate. Yeah. So we just, and one of the things we're noticing is it's a bridge for those who aren't Christians as well. Like Christmas is an amazing time to share your mm, faith. Right. So we've, we've put some songs out there that I think will be a great, we're going to try and get into some uh, TV shows and some films so that we- Some what? Or movies, films. films? We call them, you call them. We films. call them films, but you call them films. We like to pronounce the M. Okay, films. Because the good Lord put the M there, then we should make <laughs> okay. sure that we pronounce films. it. Films. Yeah. Yes, cool. <laughs> films. <laughs> I don't even think the English say films. No, nope. it's oh. only a Northern oh, Irish. Oh, sorry yes, about that. It's okay. a discrepancy that <laughs> we have it. we've perverted the English language yet now, again. Now, do you do any vinyl? Oh yeah, we do. Our awesome. new album's vinyl. Mm -hmm. Great. Did you bring any with you? We did, yes, awesome. yes. We'll, we'll sort you out with one. Great. So, yeah. Chris and Garrett, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Thanks for so. doing this interview. Oh. Can't wait to see what's happening with this show tonight. Awesome. Yes, looking forward to it. Thank you for having us.